Hello my bunnies, it's Tiki's Trinkets here, and today I have for y'all another drawing video. I, I can never figure out the right thing to say. I should really rehearse before I start. Anywho, this is a me drawing my bunny, Reese, which you see in the thumbnail. And this is one of my cryptic cutie critters that I've been working on this series for a while now. I'm trying to flush out everything. There's a lot that I want to do. It's a lot of money and a lot of time investment, so that's why it's taking me a while mainly the time more than the money the money is an issue too but the time takes just as long but anyways this is a drawing video and it's going to be a little bit different than the last few ones on um, instead of just doing music overlaid to it i'm going to have music but i'm also going to be reading a short scary story by my sister erica hall I don't know if that's the alias she uses when she writes, but I will ask her. I will also try to include one of her good read accounts or something like that, or some kind of writing account she has. I'll ask her specifically off camera. But anywho, I'm going to be reading that. It might be, it is a short scary story, but it's still kind of long, so I might not include it in this entire video, but we shall see. And if I don't get it done in this entire video, it will overlap to the next video that I'm working on, whatever that may be. Unless it's a monthly artist feature, those won't overlap because I have to talk about the art while I'm doing that. But if it's a clay tutorial or if it's a drawing tutorial, I'll be able to overlap the story. Just to let you know, the title of the story is Skins. So, Skins, like skin. So, that's just a little sneak peek. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's get into this. I hope you all enjoy. See you there, my bunnies. Skins. Aunt Victoria is my great aunt, and while we only met once while she was alive, I remember it very well. Her house was a large, two-story Victorian-style home. Each room was filled to the brim with fine things that a young girl that I was was to be elated in the presence of, until the room decor had clicked in my brain. Each room, every single one of them, housed animal skin rugs, taxidermied animals, or other various dead things. I had been so creeped out that I begged my father to leave early. My father readily agreed since he and the rest of the family had all grown estranged from Aunt Victoria throughout the years, and he had only visited to inform her of his father's and her brother's passing. My dad had been a mess for weeks after Grandpa died, but Aunt Victoria had just politely thanked my father for the information and then bid us goodbye once we left. She didn't shed a tear or even seem that upset at all through the entire visit. It was as if her brother's dying was as common as bad weather. We never went back after that, that is, until now. The door sticks to the porch as my father pushes it open with his shoulders. He is not a weak man, but old Victorian homes are truly built to last. I thought my aunt was as well, but the letter had come just a month ago informing us that Aunt Victoria has passed on. She died alone from what the handwritten letter from her lawyer had said. It's been years since we all set foot in here, but the old oak wood floors seem to shine like it did when I was eight. I don't want to be here, but Dad lost his job about three months ago, and as as bad as that is as it is to say, Aunt Victoria dying was his saving grace. She left everything to Dad. None of us are sure why, but my dad thinks it may have something to do with the fact that we were the last family members to have visited her before her passing. It's said considering how long ago that was, but... Everyone in our family has a horror story about Aunt Victoria, so it's no surprise. Her house alone is still creepy as ever, and the idea that this will be our home for who knows how long till Dad's back on his feet is a bit nauseating, but I'll put on a brave face. At least we know this place isn't haunted. What ghosts would live here with all these dead animals, I joke. Dahlia, don't be disrespectful of the dead, Dad scolds. I'm not being disrespectful disrespectful of the dead, just a dead woman's taste in decorations, I argued. Dad still seems mad, but he doesn't say anything else. He closes the door, and the sound of the door closing is what I imagine being buried alive would sound like. Dad sighs, and sets down the box he's holding, and my sister Camilla and I follow suit. Three boxes, 
Our whole life fits into three boxes, and now we're living in a two-story filled home with many tidings of a spinster. I'm worried we'll get stuck here. Our life has been a downhill journey since Mom left and ran off with a personal trainer. The divorce isn't even final yet since they can't find her to serve her the papers. Camilla stands beside me in the den, drying tears that have not stopped since Dad told her we were moving. She has been hoping one day Mom would come back, but now she thinks Mom won't find us at our new home. Dad and I don't have the heart to tell her that she most likely wouldn't come back even if we were still in our tiny two-bedroom apartment. You girls head upstairs and pick out your bedrooms. I'm going to go make some phone calls. Dad dismissed us. I wonder for a moment where he can make a call out here in the middle of the nowhere, but then I noticed the several corded wall phones throughout the den and the various other rooms as we walked upstairs. The house that time forgot, just like its owner, I think to myself we reached the hallway with the big bedrooms. I pick out the biggest one for myself. I'm 16 after all, and if I'm going to be here for God knows how long, I'm going to take every comfort I can get. I set my box down on the large queen bed in the middle of the room, but before I can tear into it, I hear what sounds like footsteps behind me. But when I turn to check, no one's there. Not even my annoying shadow of a younger sister. I shrug my shoulders and begin to unpack. It doesn't take me long, and I'm soon searching my new room for anything interesting to take my mind off of everything. At first, there is nothing. No clothes left in the closet. No old school makeup left to play with. Just dust and some pictures of a beautiful young woman I assume is Aunt Victoria in her youth. I stare at the pictures for a while longer than I expect, but I feel like I know that face. Then glancing over the top of the vanity once more, I realize I do know that face. The face is mine, give or take a few details. Aunt Victoria and I could have been twins. My pale skin is a bit lighter than hers in the photo, but not by much and we each wear our long black hair loosely down our backs. Her eyes seem larger than mine, but it could just be the makeup. The biggest difference to me is our noses. Aunt Victoria's nose is kind of what I wish I had. It's small and perfectly straight. Meanwhile, I get bullied back home for my large nose. I think I could handle that if it was just the big, but the more I got bullied, the more I looked at it in the mirror, and eventually I noticed my nose is a bit crooked. I look like what I think a ghost of Scrooge looks like in the Dickens Christmas Carol. I should fit right into this house of the dead. I shake my head to clear out the negative thoughts and start to rummage through the drawers on the vanity. And that's when I see it, a thick leather-bound book of some kind in the bottom right drawer. The leather is old tan colored, and I struggle to place the animal it the animal it could have come from in my mind. Pulling it from the confines of the vanity, I open it to read the first page. Dear Diary of Victoria Owens, the first page reads, and I shake it in slight excitement. I know I shouldn't have, but I know I'm going to read every word written here in due time. Aunt Victoria has always been a total enigma to me and my sister. The family pretty much cut ties with her completely over the few years after we were born. Everyone has had a different story as to why, as to what, but most of the compelling, for me, was my late grandfather's. He and Aunt Victoria had apparently been close as children, but when they became adults, Aunt Victoria became obsessed with the fact that she was aging. Grandpa said at first she tried the normal things to slow the aging process. Night creams, vitamins, mineral tonics, some too but row-sided cellars hawked in their town. Aunt Victoria kept it, but then she found a gray hair one day. And suddenly, Grandpa noticed strange and stranger things each time he would visit his sister. He would find books of witchcraft and history books about serial killers who believed the blood of their victims would keep them young. He tried to ignore them, but then old friends from the hometown they grew up in, where Aunt Victoria still resided, began to call him about missing pets. They called Grandpa because a few of them were sure that they had seen a person wearing dark robes taking their pets. 
The person in the robe had the longest, darkest hair, and only two people in their small town had black hair. Grandpa and Victoria. Grandpa visited Victoria for the last time when I was three or so years old. He went to talk to her about the accusations and his concerns for her mental state. He had returned a pale face and shaken and refused to tell anyone what had conspired, only that his sister could not be saved. The last time Grandpa told me that the story was two years ago, before his passing. He had cancer and begun to get his affairs in order. He had told my father that when he was gone, he wanted his sisters notified, but not in person. My father, the bleeding heart of our family, hadn't listened. I guess it is for the best since we really need this Victorian house left for us by Victoria, but it still feels like we've done something wrong. I placed the diary back on the bedside table and run back downstairs to ask Dad about dinner. I hear Camilla whispering in the room across the hall. I glance into her room, but see no one other than her, and I just move on. Camilla's had an imaginary friend since Mom left. Dad says it's a coping me mechanism. I say it's a bit creepy. Dad's on the phone still, so I mime eating with a fork at him. He then points to the stove where something is boiling in a pot, and I groan. I cannot stand too many more nights of mac and cheese. I'm grateful the church has been such a help during these past few months, but it is too much to ask for something for someone to donate a pizza. Dad lost focus on me and his writing. Something down, so I make my way back upstairs for a much-needed post-move nap. I dream. It isn't my usual dreams. It's honestly a nightmare. The dream me is here, in Aunt Victoria's house, but I'm not alone. The house feels like it's alive. I feel as though I'm being watched, and the walls shake with the force of something behind them. Dream me begins to run to my new room for the safety, but as she, I, back away from the locked door, my eyes catch the mirror, and I turn to look, and I scream. Looking back at me isn't me, but my aunt, my aunt covered in blood and holding a sharp blade. She sees me staring and grabs me, and the mirror shatters, and I wake up in a cold sweat. My eyes go straight to the vanity, to the mirror. Only my own reflection stares back at me, and I breathe a sigh of relief. I then get up and check my face in the mirror for any nap creases, and that's when I see it. A handprint on the mirror, as if someone had stood staring and gazed their own reflection. I know I didn't touch this earlier, but I shivered to think of what that really means. I run downstairs, a part of me still eight years old and desperate to be near my father. He and Camilla are setting the table. I feel the tension in my body ease. Hey, there's Sleepyhead. Welcome back to the land of the living, Dad greets me. Ha ha, Dad, very funny, I reply. I thought it was. He says with a warm smile and waves to the chair left empty for me. I sit down and watch Camilla. Camilla watches Dad dole out the same mac and cheese we've been sac scarfing down twice a week for the last month. She seems more reserved than normal, and for a moment I wonder if she has experienced something too. Dad places our plates in front of us before we begin making ours. We eat in silence the past month and today, bringing us each down for our own reasons. After dinner, we all go our separate ways. Dad's got to make more phone calls to get things set up for our new life, Camilla playing with her few toys in her bedroom, and me to my room to read old, old Aunt Vicky's diary. The day passes on, and I'm none the wiser. Each page of Victoria's diary left me more intrigued than the last. My room soon grows dark for me to sleep. When Dad comes to tell me to get some rest, I am well and truly freaked out and no longer want to sleep in this room, my aunt's room. The journal reads like a descent into madness. The page is describing my aunt's need for eternal beauty and reveling almost every animal in this house met its end at her hands. I lay down with the journal beside me, with the bedside lamp still on. It feels like hours, but it's likely only been one before I drift off. 
The sound of scraping causes me to stir. I ignore it for some time, but then I hear footsteps. My heart hammers in my chest as the steps stop beside me in my bed, just in front of the bedside table. I want to stay still and pretend nothing's happening. I want to scream for my dad to come and save me, but instead I steal my nerves by pure will and crack my eyes open. My body then runs cold. To be continued. <laughs>